Hello, welcome to Erwin Singh Academy. We are discussing today motion in one dimension, and in this chapter, uh, we will discuss uh, about uh, distance, displacement, position, length of path, everything we will discuss for understanding motion, coding motion. So, let me discuss starting this topic without wasting time. What is motion and how to deal with this topic? So, first of all, we will discuss about the motion, what is motion. So, in fact, uh, motion is the state of uh, a body in which uh, its position changes with respect to time. Position changes with respect to time, then body is said to be motion. But to change the position, uh, there must be a point of reference and uh, with the reference of that point, we can say the body is in motion if they are changing their positions with the increasing time or changing time. <coughs> For example, uh, a car is moving on road, it is considered to be in motion because its position is changing uh, from uh, any stationary object nearby the road. So it is said to be in motion. But a passenger sitting in a bus uh, is it uh, said to be in motion because their position is not changing for time with time their position is fixed with the surrounding nearby passenger or with respect to the bus with respect to the seat with respect to the driver his position is not fixed so is it uh, possible that uh, with the help of this definition we can say the body is said to be in motion or rest it is a question and on the basis of this question to analyze this there must be a point of reference or there must be comparison with another body then only we can say whether the body is in rest or in motion two passengers are sitting in a bus with respect to each other they are in rest but with respect to the surrounding nearby road nearby tree nearby houses they are in motion so to discuss the motion of a body we need another body um, with respect to uh, that body we can define whether the first body is in motion or in rest for example uh, if i am saying that uh, the position is not changing a body with respect to time then it is said to be in rest for example a book lying on the table it can be considered in rest but why it is considered to be in rest because with respect to surrounding the position of the book is not changing with the time and therefore it is said to be in rest but you know the earth is in motion earth has two type of motion one is translatory motion and another is rotatory motion so everything on earth is in also motion because earth is in motion body everything lying on earth it is also in motion so with respect to sun uh, can we consider the book is in uh, motion or rest whether it is said to be in rest or motion it is in motion because earth is in motion with respect to sun so everything lying on it is also will be in motion <coughs> similarly uh, for the example i have given that bus is in motion so every passenger sitting in the bus is also in motion so it is a relative word motion is a relative word and with respect to another body a body can be in rest while uh, with respect to another body a body can be in rest similarly <coughs> a similar example can be given when two people are uh, cycling on road with the same speed and same direction then they will be in rest in compared to one another in comparison to one another with respect to one another but they are in motion in comparison to the nearby trees, nearby houses and with respect to road because their position are continuously changing with time. So <clears throat> a body can be in rest or in motion. It can be defined with respect to another body of uh, nearby surrounding. Nearby has no specific uh, range of the surrounding. So it can be considered that nearby surrounding. It means uh, comparison with a nearby environment of only. Uh, there is no specific nearby. Nearby uh, word is an uh, ambiguous word. But still, we can say a body is said to be in motion if its position changes with respect to its surrounding in given time. So, 
here let me write the definition of motion first and then we will go for the definition of rest as well so the topic is motion in one dimension motion in one dimension first thing is what is motion and then we will discuss about what is one dimension or two dimension or three dimension or if there is any other dimension as well so we will discuss this motion in one dimension first of all i am going to discuss about the motion a body is said to be motion the very simple definition you have studied in this in class 9th as well but still uh, because this is the starting of topic so i would like to write here. a body is said to be said to be in motion if its position position changes with respect to with respect to its surrounding surrounding with change in time change of time with passing change of time so body is said to be motion for example a car is running or moving car is running or moving on the road car is moving on the road the road a boy is boy is running on the platform etc Right. right. So let us discuss how we can say the body in motion. Uh, let us see. Uh, this is a straight line. I can consider. And uh, position of body at an instant of time is here only. So at that point of time when we start observing, the time is considered to be t uh, one. Right now, there is some time, but uh, that can be taken also as zero. But uh, zero there is no time zero we can start when t is equal to zero that is also true means the time when you start observing or you can say time is t1 t time is t and position of this body is here only say like this uh, uh, a sport person girl is moving here similarly a, a ring is there and position of this ring at this instant of time say t is equal to t1 then this is the position and the distance from this point of point it is just said to be x1 x1 is the distance from this origin this is the position so it is said to be x1 so when t1 is equal to time is t1 then position of this body is x1 again the same body is traveled from x1 to x2 and after some time if it is observed that the position of the body changes and that position comes from this position to here only right and that is also a position where uh, the position of the time is sometimes increased and time is said to be t2 in that case time is t2 and uh, t is equal to time is something different that is t2 and position from here is x2 position from this place to this place is x2 x2 is the position so total change in position of the body with time when time changes position changes time changes so with change of time with change of time time position of body position of body changes with changes with reference point point of reference so point of reference is where o with point of reference point of reference so therefore the body is said to be in motion body changes its position from this place to this place and the distance from this to is uh, say uh, the distance from here this origin is uh, x2 the 
this is your distance x2 you can say and this is your distance x1 right now so this is your x2 say this distance is x2 and this distance is just x1 x1 is this place so we can say this is the point of reference so point of reference is origin here. this is the point of reference from where the distance can be measured position can be measured and position of a particle this is a moving particle say and this moving like this right now so direction of movement is this so particle is moving like this and position changes from g x1 to x2 similarly if uh, it is not changing the position then body is said to be in rest so what is rest let me write here the definition for rest as well a body is said to be in rest body is said to be in rest if its position not changes with time not changes with time time with respect to with respect to its surrounding surrounding then body is said to be in rest for example a book lying on table lying on table a house tree etc right now they are not changing position with respect to time. So, how is three etc. These are said to be in rest. So, I hope you got the difference. So, with comparison of one another, a body is said to be in rest or whether it is in motion. Now, the path length of path. Length of path. What is when body is in motion? Then there is a length of path. What is length of path? So, length of path is described as distance. The actual length of path, actual length of path is described as, described as the distance covered by body, distance covered by body in a given time given time or interval of time given interval of time it will be better to write here interval of time given interval of time given interval of time right so this is the distance so we can say distance is the total path length so we can write another word for it distance is Total length of path. Total length of path. Right now. So, covered by the body. Covered by the body. And this length of path is described as in above example. What is the length of path? So, length of path is described here. And this is the length of path from where to where? That is from x1 to x2 this is the total length of path so total length of path is this one this is the length of path which is described here so the length of path is the actually the difference between two position that is the length of path length of path the length of path is length of path is the difference between difference between two position two position of body position of a body in given interval of time in given interval of time interval of time so in the above example uh, we can say the length of path is what 
length of path is x2 minus x1. The length of path is nothing else but x2 minus x1. In time out, length of path is therefore the length of path is the length of path length of path is in interval of time time p2 minus p1 is x2 minus x1 so position at any point can be described as position at any point is described as x1 is at t1 x1 at t1 and x2 at t it means time position is a function of time when time changes position also changes so here we can say x2 t2 x1 t1 x1 t1 means x1 t1 means the position is x1 position of body is x1 at time t1 right similarly this means position of position of body is x2 at time t2 right so understood like this so it can be written that the length of path length of path just to describe this of the body is x1 t1 minus x2 t2 x1 t1 minus x2 t2 or x2 would be right better here x2 t2 minus x1 t2 x2 t2 minus x1 t1 right now so position is a function of time we can also represent like this because we are not in 9th class uh, you are in 11th class so we can uh, write like this this is the most scientific way in which you can represent the position of the body with respect to time so position length of path of the body covered in what time in time t2 minus t1 in time t2 minus t1 so this is the actual path so if a body is traveled just another example I start from a and travel this is the point a and travel to b here and then again to c then the total path length path of length is obviously the total length of path is between this two is a and c a b and c a b plus b c the length of path length of path is a b plus b c a b plus b c total length of path is a b plus b c right i hope you got it okay so a b plus b c length of path is a b plus b c so length of path is a b plus b c i hope you got it there is a if a particle is moving on a circular orbit then what will happen suppose if a particle is moving on this circular orbit and starting from a and travel to b this is the radius r I start from a and come again at this point so in one round the distance the length of path is length of path when particle start from particle starts from a and return back to back to a is 2 pi r back to a is equal to 2 pi r where r is radius of circular path circular path right r is radius of circular path similarly if a person start from a and return to a itself say 
if a person start from a goes to b right now a to b a to b and then he return from b to a as well return again from b to a in that case the total path length of path will be a b plus b a length of path will be a b plus b a right now length of path will be a b plus b a length of path will be a b plus b a then length of path will be length of path will be a b plus b a that is b a and a b are total equal length so that will be two times of a b right now total distance is two times of a b if the distance is s then it can be written as 2s but there is another word and that is called displacement what is displacement let me write here the displacement 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 the shortest distance shortest distance between between initial and final position and final position of a moving body moving body is called linear displacement or simply displacement linear displacement or simply displacement displacement because there is angular displacement as well so remember this it is a, if i am saying this linear displacement then it means it is a, a straight distance so in that above example we can say uh, let me discuss here what is displacement because this is the initial point a this is the initial position initial position and body return to this position again right now so it return to this position again so here final position is also like this final position and here initial position and final position is same and therefore displacement is zero displacement is zero so in this case displacement is zero here also a is the initial position initial position initial position is a final position is a right and therefore displacement is zero displacement is zero because it is same point here the displacement is from a to c this is the displacement the shortest distance is a straight line and that is a displacement so this one is described as displacement right this one is described as displacement so displacement is here ac ac is displacement so displacement here is nothing else but ac ac is the displacement so we can analyze that displacement can be directional it must have direction from a to c this is the direction and because it has direction so it is considered to be a vector quantity since displacement has direction so it is a vector quantity got it displacement has direction so it is a vector quantity so let me write here the displacement is a vector quantity displacement is displacement has direction direction as well as magnitude magnitude so it is a vector quantity it is a vector quantity right while length of path 
while distance is a scalar quantity while because it has magnitude only no direction distance is a scalar quantity you know the quantity which can be described by magnitude as well as direction that is called vector and the quantity which can be described by magnitude only that is called a scalar distance never be zero or negative never be zero or negative or negative never be zero or negative for a moving body moving body but displacement can be but displacement can be zero you have seen some examples negative and positive positive how is that try to understand so displacement can be zero can be positive can be negative so uh, zero you have seen in circular case and when body is turned to the same position then that will be zero now where how it will be negative let me explain that point so start from a say a body goes to b this point no? body start from a goes to b and now body return from b to C here, right? Now. In that case, C. In that case, displacement is shortest distance, and that shortest distance from A to C only, right? Now. So shortest distance will be A to C. In that case, our displacement will be positive because it is a directional, and it has a vector quantity. So in that case, body when returned from A to C. In that case, displacement is positive. So here, displacement is displacement displacement is AC. That is positive. Positive. Right now, AB minus AC. That is AC. That is AB minus AC. And which is equal to AC and magnitude of AC is displacement, or even it is a vector quantity, so we can write this AC. So AB minus BC is AC, that is the displacement. If body return to same position, say start from A and return to B, then it will be body start from here and return again to the same position, then in that case. A, B and B, C are the same, magnitude A, B and C. So starting position here, displacement is, displacement is A, B plus vector B, C. Right now, but what is that? A, B is equal and opposite in B, C. B, C is equal to minus of A, B. And therefore, this is zero. Since BC is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, so BC is nothing else but minus of A. And therefore, displacement is zero. So we can consider the displacement can be zero here because when body start from the same position and return back to same position, in this case, displacement can be zero. But when displacement can be negative. Let me explain this. Displacement of the particle can be negative. Suppose body start from A, goes to B, and then start from B and return to C. Body start from B and return to C on the same path, right? Say here, C. In that case, displacement will be between A to C. So displacement is in negative direction of the motion and therefore it is negative so here displacement is displacement is ab plus bc right now ab plus bc but uh, ab 
वेक्टर माइनस बी सी वेक्टर इज इक्वल टू बी सी इज ऑल्सो माइनस ऑफ ए बी इन डायरेक्शन इट इज माइनस ऑफ ए बी सी इज इक्वल टू वॉट बी टू सी इज माइनस ऑफ ए बी प्लस ए सी दैट इज बी सी इज नथिंग एल्स माइनस ऑफ ए बी प्लस ए सी सो माइनस ऑफ ए बी प्लस ए सी एंड हेंस displacement is ac and that ac is in opposite direction of which is opposite direction opposite direction of direction of motion opposite direction of motion and hence displacement ac is displacement AC is negative. Is negative. Displacement AC is negative. I hope you got it. So BC is opposite of AB. You can say here a BC is equal to BC is AB plus BA plus AC. And BA plus AC is BA is. You can write here BA is minus of AB. So You can put here the negative sign. Put here the bracket as well. There is no problem, and in that case, it will be minus of S. So it will be negative. Displacement is negative. So I hope you got this point. So what is the day motion and what is the rest? You understood it. What is the displacement? You got it. So you have seen that displacement may not be equal to actual path. remember this point displacement of body displacement of a moving body moving body may not be equal to may not be equal to actual path of path length equal to length of path or path length may not be equal to length of path that is distance right now sometimes it may be equal to some examples are there where they are equal say body is start from a and go to b here displacement is ab and distance is here distance distance is equal to displacement magnitude is equal to ab right now? so magnitude by both of them are same so actual path length that is path length path length right and whenever there is a motion like curve uh, you know like this a to b body travel from a to b the length is the actual path but displacement is just a straight line you can say the straight line is the distance so this is the distance you know And distance is this, and displacement is this. Okay, so I hope you got. So this is the distance, and that is distance length is the distance AB, and displacement is that distance. Displacement. Okay. so i hope you understood each and everything and uh, next thing we will discuss after the break till then take care and god bless